we go. So we are chapter 11 in a, in dialogues. And the return to unity and the end of thought as you know it. Who would like to show it? Yeah, I can go. Go, Kim. Thank you. We haven't here been talking of the art of thought, but of the use of thought. You use thought to solve problems, mm -hmm. apply thought to intellectual puzzles, focus your thoughts in order to make up your mind. You make lists of your thoughts so you don't forget what they remind you to do. You order your thoughts to communicate effectively. You take note of your thoughts and you take notes on the thoughts of others. Oh, God. That sounds like it'll take a lot of time. <laughs> you might even consider this dialogue the written notes of my thoughts. In this one example, can you not see the fallacy inherent in all the others? To think of these dialogues in this way, dear brothers and sisters, is insane. <laughs> to think of the thought or idea of God by which you were created as the same type of thought I have just described would be insane. Are you willing any longer to see me as a lecturer or even as a great teacher? Am I but a giver of information from whom another is capable of taking notes? You think it is only the content of your thoughts that differentiate you from others? Do you think the same is true of you and me? Is it that you think that differentiates you from me, not our content, which is one and the same? Is it that you think, Marge, that differentiates you from me, not our content, which is one and the same? Oh, okay. <laughs> wow. I can I can't even really imagine how it would be not to think, you know, I could I can't imagine it. <laughs> it's unimaginable. Mm. Would someone else like to read or shall I keep going? Yeah, give us another one. Right. I you think might you have, might have read that last sentence as a question, Kim. I think it did. I'll read it again. It is that, you think, that differentiates you from me, not our content, which is one and the same. Mm -hmm. Interesting. Isn't yeah, it? That's better, isn't it? Yeah. You might imagine that the way you think is so different from the way I think that they are incomparable. But thinking is not an accurate description of what I do or of what occurs in unity. I am, and I extend what I am. This dialogue is that extension. God's idea of you extended and became you and me and all the sons and daughters of creation. God's idea of you extended and became you and me and all the sons and daughters of creation. Mm -hmm. You know, this is all about the powering the mind. You know how I always go like, we live here in this one spot and as we move away from it, which is an intent, like if you if you go to your heart right away, what happens to your thinking? Don't answer it. 
<laughs> See, it merely kind of smiles you. Mm. You go out of your head, and it just you just immediately feel different. It's just that habit of going back in the head and mulling over the little thoughts. Mm. I think it's just that simple. It's just drop, yeah, I think drop yeah. in your heart and extend. Like it's all about the extension. When you begin to, instead of giving thoughts, you begin to give your heart. And that you can give, but I think I'm starting to see more and more. You can. You're in your head with the thoughts. You can't really give them. They're just. Yes. It's not possible. Yeah. Ah. And then you just, that's, that's the whole practice. You just stay in your heart and you let it grow. Like you're birth, virtually birthing the Christ and you let it grow within yourself. So it just encompasses everything and but it it like grows within you as you so next minute you feel that love all the way down your feet you feel it in every cell in your body until you don't even distinguish between your body and this and that See, when you lose that smile, you're thinking about it, right? Mm, yeah. yeah. You really, <laughs> now you're trying to figure it out. And that's it. You lose the joy. You know, I, was just, you, yeah. I was imagining like Jesus with his disciples and he's just pouring love and they're just thinking, 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 thinking. <laughs> yeah. I mean, you know, if you look at it this way, Think of Jesus. Do you think of Jesus as a great mind or great heart? Oh, both. Yeah. Hmm? Both. When yeah. I think of the, when I think of what's been written here, I think he's a, an incredible mind. Yes. At heart as well. It's both. Yeah, but for me, but you know, for me, it's just um, the thought disappears basically. And I just feel this presence, you know, the Christ presence, Jesus' presence. And and in there, it's very, for me, it's like, of course, it's amazingly written and everything. But I still see it more the heart than anything else. Oh. Hmm. I found it really hard to connect to Jesus. I can think of the Father more easily. Mm -hmm. But maybe that's why, because it's been more to do with thinking about him and not yeah, I mean, feeling. Ideally, not feeling. ideally, if you connect to the Father or God, you know, like, hey, you don't, you don't need the one in between. Right. You know, if the step is too big, then he's there for you. But once you feel the oneness with God, the, the, in, the time, like, like he says in the book, the time of intermediaries is over because once you in unity, mm -hmm. you don't need anyone to bring you to it and tell you, hey, it's safe. Come, come with me. You're, you're going to be okay. It's beautiful. Mm. All right, who's going to read the next bit? Allison. You are Cole. I am. <laughs> you are Cole. <laughs> right. Yeah, I'd love to. <laughs> In the opening page of this dialogue, I said that you give and you receive from the well of spirit. True giving and receiving is of unity. True giving and receiving is not of the separated thought 
of the separated thought system of the separated self. You accept that the concept in the treatise on the art of thought was but a beginning to the total rejection of thought as you know it. That must now occur in order to go on to creation of the new. You create the new from and in unity. Mm, beautiful. Oh. I tell you lately, I it's such a resistance to that. I don't know what's going on. It's like, no. <laughs> Yes. Ah. Like they say, resist no evil. <laughs> <laughs> ah, like, yeah. like, don't resist that resistance either. Yes. Because you have the resistance and then you're resisting that. Like you shouldn't oh. have, right? Yeah. Mm. It's the lies of the resist. Just keep resisting. And you suddenly back in the flow again. Your thoughts are the last passion of your separated self. <laughs> Thank you. the fertile ground still of your individuality, your testimony, that you believe you are still on your own and then you still desire to be for only here in this area of your individuality, do you believe you make your contributions to the world? Mm -hmm. Your desire to make a contribution to help to make new world that you have known has been enhanced and amplified by what you have learned. You know you have been called and that the contribution has been asked of you. And so your mighty thoughts <laughs> And so your mighty thoughts have returned their focus have on turned. Turn, have turned their focus on this problem and attacked it as they attack all problems to be solved. The idea of making a contribution has begun to receive the attention of your thoughts. The hope of answering your call and fulfill your promise has lit a bonfire in your heart and begun a stampede of thoughts within your mind. What's a stampede? Um, uh, you know, when you see a whole lot of um, cattle <clears throat> suddenly running in one direction. Okay, I see. Out of control, yeah, they just trample everything. Out of control right. movement. Yeah, when they're when they're running away from fire or something like that, they're right. in fear. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Beautiful, beautiful visuals. <laughs> mm. Just like mind can do. Eh? Again, is this not what we spoke in the beginning of this dialogue? What was spoken of as your desire to prepare? Let me ask you a question. Do you think desire will still be with you when you have achieved what you have desired? Do you think desire, desire will be still with you when you have achieved what you have desired? Anyone? I, I would say yes. Because there's always seems to be another desire. <laughs> I don't know. Yeah, I had the same thought. 
But if mm. if you're thinking about the desire of one thing and it's achieved and acknowledged, then you would no longer desire that one thing. Mm. But desire in itself, I think, is forever. I think oh. it's the kind of the magnetic force in us, you know. Mm. Just, uh, this like try this one. Just feel the desire. It's actually quite beautiful. You feel that? Like Well, if you don't have desire, you can't do anything. Well, we can, because you think of desire, you need to desire something. But what right, if yeah. desire itself? Oh, it's a it's an energy. Yeah. It's like yeah, it's it's a mm. try it. You know, like it's an experiment, it's not even like some kind of dogma. We're just looking at what does it feel like. I always feel desire. It just doesn't matter what you desire. It's more that you desire. And that mm -hmm. in itself is like fulfillment in itself, if it's fully allowed. But desire has been taught in, in many books to get rid of, right? Mm -hmm. mm. Is it not possible to conceive of a time in which desire will no longer serve you, just as learning now no longer serves you? If you reach a state of full acceptance of who you are, and in that state fully accept that your contribution is being made, will desire be still with you? way to achieve this state is through acceptance that it is already accomplished. Mm -hmm. You know, so that which you desire is already in you. That's the funniest thing. Except you haven't given it an expression, you haven't given it, and so it feels like you're lacking it. Mm. Yeah. So it's like a magnet. Yeah. The, the positive reaches the negative, and it's all one. <laughs> yeah, it's all one. But because it's given, you know, if you don't give it, then you feel like you're lacking it. But if you start giving it. We've done that a few times. Remember, like, what do you desire? What do you wholeheartedly desire? Do you have anything? Best is to, to apply it. You know, what do you desire? Like above all else, let's say. What's your greatest desire? You could have anything. <laughs> Contentment. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, there, but there you have it. You see? Now give it. Give the contentment. And to everyone, I offer contentment. You begin to give that feeling, and as you give it, you're receiving it. And then if you don't stop, it just keeps flowing out of you. Mm. And we also limit the giving. We just give a little bit. And so we receive a little bit. And then it feels like we are unfulfilled. But once you learn to give it fully, <laughs> the hall is filled in for good.
is really desire. Hmm? A desire feels like something on the inside, whereas wanting feels like something on the outside. Mm -hmm. Because no matter what you get, it's just going to bring up a feeling in you of some kind that makes you happy. But where is that feeling that's in you? You don't have to collect enormous amount of things. Instead, you just allow yourself to feel the joy of it all. And yet, as soon as your thoughts begin to accept this, many of you reverse the direction of your thoughts and turn to ideas of what you still need to do to accomplish your calling, to make a contribution. Such is the way of mind, the way of the thoughts of the mind. So now I return you to an idea of how these words have come to you, for if you can fully accept the way in which these words have been given and received, you will see that you can fully accept the way of unity. Anyone else? Yeah, I'll read. <clears throat> Thanks, Donna. You have been told you give and you receive from the well of spirit. What might this mean? How might this relate to the giving and receiving of these words? To the discussion we have been having about the body and the elevation of the self of form. How might this relate to your desire to make a contribution and answer your calling? How does this relate to your desire to know what to do? These answers lie within you, at the heart or centre of yourself, as do all answers. Your desire to make of me a teacher is the same as your desire to make your thoughts into answers that will provide you with direction. As was said earlier, you dare not as yet turn to your own heart for answers. Mm. Yet your heart is the well of spirit from which true answers are drawn. Your heart is a full well, a wellspring from which you can continually draw with no danger of ever drawing an empty bucket. <laughs> mm. That's beautiful, huh? Mm. My cup runneth over. Yes. <laughs> That's it. You need never thirst again when you have accepted this. You need never seek again for answers when this has been accepted. Because you will know and fully accept that the answers lie within. To believe that you are already accomplished and not live from this belief is insane. For reasons already enumerated time and time again. What prevents this belief from becoming an ability and prevents it from going from being an ability to simply being who you are is your thoughts. Thoughts that need an explanation for everything and an explanation that makes sense in terms of the world you have always known. Amazing. 
the giving and receiving of these words will never make sense within the terms of the world you have always known. The giving and receiving of these words will never make sense within the terms of the world you have always known. Bingo, that's so amazing, isn't it? Mm. I was trying to fit it into this. Even mm. the kingdom, like you can't even find the kingdom and then you're trying to stick it into this world and it's just going to fail. Mm. <laughs> No explanation will ever be good enough for those who set limits upon the truth. But for those willing to open their minds and hearts to a new way of seeing, for those willing to suspend disbelief, the answer to the giving and receiving of these words will provide the answer to the question your thoughts cannot quite comprehend well enough to even articulate, much less to answer. Mm -hmm. These words give evidence of who I am because they give evidence that I know who you are. That these words give evidence that I know who you are and that they give the same evidence to your brothers and sisters that I know who they are will tell you something of the nature of who you are if you but let this idea dwell within you and take up residence in your heart. We are the sacred heart. As was said as we began this dialogue, we, together, are the will of spirit. We, together, are the shared consciousness of unity. In our union, we bear the sameness of the Son of God. In our union, we bear the sameness of the Son of God. In going forth with the vision of unity, you become as I was during life. You do not think your way through life, but instead draw your knowing forth from the well of spirit, from the shared consciousness from which these words are given and received. That's me. Beautiful. Wow.
Kim, you want to give it a go? Yeah. In other words, the elevated self form does not remain contained within the dot of the body, but draws its sustenance from the larger circle, the circle of unity. Mm. What then becomes the contribution, the unique contribution of each elevated self of form? The contribution becomes a contribution from the well of spirit, from the shared consciousness of unity that finds its expression its unique expression through the elevated self form. Why would you return your desire to make an individual contribution when you can now make a contribution such as this? <laughs> <laughs> yes. Is not your unique expression of the whole enough for you? Is it not infinitely greater than the contributions that are possible for the individual separated self to make? Is not the history of your world built yeah. with individual contributions of incredible scope? Do you still believe that the contribution made by the man Jesus was an individual contribution? Wow. <laughs> I tell you, yeah. I tell you truthfully that the only contributions that endure, the only contributions that are truly lasting, are contributions that arise from the well of spirit. Mm. Mm. I love that. I love that expression. The well of spirit. Mm. Mm. What danger blade. Mm. Hi, Anthony. Hi, Anthony. <laughs> there he goes. To seek importance for the personal self would be akin to placing the importance of Jesus on the man Jesus who existed in history. Some do see Jesus only as an important man among many important men. Those who do so miss the point of the life of Jesus, just as they miss the point of their own lives. Oh, <laughs> <laughs> oh. when I, whenever I felt the most down in life. The question always came to me, what is the point? <laughs> right. You know, like, what's the point of anything? Oh. Mm -hmm. So, yeah, I've missed that, that's for sure. Those who do so seek to make individual contributions as important men and women and do not seek to give expression to what is in everyone's heart. Oh. To what is there in unity, to what is the truth of who we all are, rather than the truth of who the individual is. Mm. There is no truth inherent in the individual separated self, but only illusion. The illusion can be described in many different ways that lead to many paths of seeking. But illusion can provide no place in which the seeking ends and the truth is found. Turn now not to your thoughts, but to the mind and heart joined in unity. Mm. 
Yes. In unity. Unity is where the heart and mind are joined. Unity is the place from which the expression, the right-minded action of the elevated self of form arises. Mm. Unity is the source of these words. So is it said. So is it the truth. Wow. So everything we create is a separated self will just bring more separation. Mm. Separate ideas, separate plans, separate solutions. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I love it. Turn now not to your thoughts, but to the mind and the heart joined in unity. Oh. In unity. Unity is where the heart and mind are joined. Unity is the place from which the expression the right-minded action of the elevated self of form arises. Unity is the source of these words. Wow. So is it said. So is the truth. Beautiful. Mm. Happy to read one more. How is how is the feeling in the group? Mm -hmm. Our mini group. <laughs> <laughs> well, maybe yeah. Oh. Yeah, I'm okay. I'm not reading, but I'm okay. You're okay to stay where we are or to read on, Kevin? Oh, yeah, to read on. Just that I'm not reading, so I feel I can't read yet, so I'll leave it up to you. But I'm, ha I'm happy to stay and keep going. Thanks, brother. Well, let's just read, see how we go, huh? Mm -hmm. The body and your thoughts. It's my turn, isn't it? Yep. In the terms in which you are used to thinking, terms that have put the body at the center of your universe and yourself. There is no mechanism through which thought can enter your mind. You believe though, you believe thoughts exist in your mind and are themselves the product, product of your brain, which lies within your body. Since it is believed that a cessation, thank you, ladies, <laughs> <laughs> of brain activity is equivalent to the end of thought, your 
you are, you accept this as a proof that your thoughts originate from within your brain. You may have the picture, you may have pictured the person who first perceived these words as receiving them either through her thoughts or through her ears, as in the idea of hearing words. The receiver of these words, in fact, hears these words as thoughts. They are not her thoughts. But they also are not separate from her. How can this be? They are quite simply not the separated thoughts of the separated thought system. Oh my God, this is so good. Oh God, I just got dropped in. Oh. Mm. I can't read. Can you continue, Alison? Sure. Thanks, Alan. This work is called a dialogue. A dialogue is most often thought of as a discourse between two or more people and as such is associated with the spoken word. When you enter into dialogue with another person, you listen, you hear, and you respond. This is exactly what occurs here. You have entered into this dialogue. While you think these words come to you through the written form of this book, by means of your eyes and the decoding mechanism of your brain, they do not, nor did the words of this course. <clears throat> you. <clears throat> Excuse me. You were told within this course, and you are reminded now that these words enter through your heart. As your mind and heart joined in unity and became capable of hearing the same language, you truly began to enter the place of unity, to take the step outside of the dot of the body. <clears throat> now, you may not think that you have been doing this, yet few of you would argue that you have been simply reading these words as you have read the words of other books. While you may be aware that something different is going on here, <clears throat> you might also say that your body has felt no step into the realm of unity. And you may rightly wonder now if you can take such a step and be unaware of it, what its value to you is. 
This is why we work now on your awareness and acceptance of your changed state. For without awareness, the value of what we do here does remain minimal, and this I cannot allow. The urgent need for your return to unity has been mentioned before, and I remind you of this urgency again. Let your reception of these words, a reception different from the reading of the words of most and maybe all other books you have read, be assigned to you. Keep this in mind as you consider how the first receiver of these words can hear these words as thoughts. Keep in mind that she thus has thoughts. She is not thinking. Mm. Kim? Okay. Oh. We have spoken already of entering into dialogue. When you enter into dialogue with another person, you hear what it is they have to say. You hear their thoughts through the form of the spoken word. They do not then become your thoughts, but they do enter you. Their words must enter you in order for them to provide a source for your response. To become a means, to become a means of communication and exchange. The same is true of the thoughts these words symbolize. Thus we continue to expand the territory of your conscious awareness through this realization that the ability of thoughts, not your own, to enter you is already commonplace. We have already established that the thoughts that arise from unity are not the same as the thoughts that arise from the thought system of the separated self. We might make this a simpler subject to discuss by making the distinction between thinking and thought. This distinction, while it will not be consistent with your di dictionary's definition of these words, is still a useful distinction as thinking is seen as what you do. <laughs> Even in your dictionary definition, being thoughtful is seen as a condition of mindfulness and mindfulness is much closer to the idea of wholeheartedness or sharing in unity the state of which we speak. Realise also that you do not consider it to be the thinking of another that is shared with you in dialogue, but the thoughts. Thus this distinction will suffice for our further discussion in this chapter. Oh. Let us now consider thinking to be the active and often unwelcome voice in your head, the voice of background chatter. And let us consider your thoughts to be the more meditative version of your thinking, often even resulting in a conclusion to your thinking, a summary of the finer points as what might come to you in a reflective moment at the end of the day. 
again, we will see the idea of thoughts coming to you at such times. This is not the thinking of a conflicted and struggling mind, but the thoughts of a mind at rest. Hmm. How are you guys doing? Pretty I got into thinking. <laughs> I don't think I can think. <laughs> I feel I feel I feel drunk. I feel stoned right now. Mm. Oh. I feel like I'm really out of it. I get this a lot from because that, that unity feels a little bit dopey. <laughs> mm. It's like you just don't take your thinking so seriously. The thoughts of a mind at rest, you know, that's contentment. Yeah. It's not it's not there's something it's not there's something lacking. It's it's yeah. fullness. Mm. Thinking is more descriptive of the ego mind. Thoughts are more descriptive of the true mind. Mm. Wow, that's a beautiful distinction, isn't it? Mm. I'm not saying that your ego is still at work because you still think in the same way as before. I am about to make the two main points of this discussion. First, <laughs> is that thinking with or without the ego is a pattern of separated self and does not serve you. Da, da, da. Mm. The way in which you think may seem vastly improved since the ego ruled or may seem only minimally improved. But it is the pattern, not the ego, that is still with you. Wow. Mm. The second point is that although thinking does not serve you, you do have right now and have always had true thoughts that come to you from the self, the self joining unity. These are thoughts you did not think just as the first receiver of these words received them as thoughts she did not think. What I'm striving to help you see once again is that the union isn't achieved with a flash of light from above. <laughs> yeah, I love that. <laughs> but it quietly infiltrates the dot of the self in its unguarded, unguarded moments. I'm attempting to help you to become aware and comfortable with the idea that release of all patterns, the self will join with unity more and more frequently until finally you will sustain Christ consciousness and live in the world as the elevate, elevated self of form. Mm. Oh. Mm. Nice, huh? Yeah. Mm. I, wonder, I wonder when that will finally happen. <laughs> happening. It's happening. It's, it, I, it is happening. It's happening it, very gently. gently. I feel it yes. happening in me yeah. very, very gently and slowly. Beautiful. So I can't almost can't see the difference. Yes. But 
um, I'm noticing little things. Yes. Like when I go for a walk, I know where I'm going to, but I have no idea which way I'm going to walk, which mm. direction I'm going to walk in. Mm. <laughs> Just do it as it comes. Yeah. Mm. Just little things like that, but there are changes. I'm, I'm glad it's like that because I think if it was any other way, it would terrify me, you know. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, it will just show up more and more. That's true. Mm -hmm. But it, you know, it like it just creeps in like a thief in the night. You don't even know it's happening, you know. <laughs> and then suddenly you just wake up and you go like, gosh, everything's different. Like it dawns on you. Mm -hmm. And it just dawns more and more. And then it even appears you lost it. <laughs> but, oh yeah yeah yeah, <laughs> yeah. I know. but when you when you really just refocus yourself for a moment and just go like oh no actually it's all here all the time and then it becomes for me personally it becomes intensely communicative yeah particularly in my encounters i just find and particularly they simple usually one-on-one -on -one, there is this interesting dropping that happens where we begin to unite and we become more and more speechless mm -hmm. so the dialogue like the knowing of each other is it's more like rather than looking at the, the separated thoughts more like the gift of the other become known. Like the, the beauty that the other shines that reflects your own self somehow. Or reminds you. So, so it's just delicious. Mm. Mm. And also, it's quite intense. <laughs> uh, yeah, I find um, when I'm aware of something like that happening, it, it does seem miraculous. But I guess really it's our normal state, but we've lost it. Mm. Oh, yeah. One of the primary ideas that will assist you in leaving patterns of thinking behind is the idea, the thoughts, as we are describing it, the thought, the thought that is not really thought, but the way of coming to know of the self joining unity enters you through the place of mind and heart joining of wholeheartedness. Mm -hmm. At the center of yourself, this is an important sentence. As the center of yourself, where is the center of yourself? Where heart and mind are joined in unity. Where is that? <laughs> I think it's that big circle, not the dot. <laughs> yeah. <I don't> know. <laughs> yeah, where is it? <laughs> it doesn't come as an answer. It comes as an experience. Like it shows itself to you. The more you want to see it, the more it comes to you. Oh. but it's a really good in inquiry like where is the center of yourself and it says and it helps you straight away and it says a place that has nothing to do with the body Boing. Yeah. 
that you listen, hear, and respond may at times be of the body, but it may also at times not be of the body. Mm. The main idea to hold in your mind and heart is the idea of entry and the idea that comes of unity does not need access to your the idea that what comes thank you darling what comes for of unity does not need access through your body's eyes or ears or any of what you consider to be your senses along with this idea it is essential for you to realize that this is not so strange and unusual as it may sound that this access and entryway already exists within you and that you have already benefited from moments of interaction with, if not awareness of, the state of unity. Now that you are coming to a more clear idea of what the thoughts that, that came to you from unity may be like, you will undoubtedly realize this. You have had such thoughts already. Thoughts that came to you with an authority that you are not used to. Thoughts that you know beyond a shadow of a doubt are true or right, or accurate. Mm. This may be simple thoughts about a situation in which you are involved, or about a situation of another. Or there may be profound insights into yourself or the nature of the world. God, I love this book. Whoa. Oh, do you want to let Leanne know what we're up to? And also, Leanne, we've been going for over an hour. It might have been the daylight saving changes in Australia and America. Thanks. I found it. 12.15. I'm on it. Like shark on chum. You are, aren't you? <laughs> Would you like to also read for us? Would you be happy to? Sure, I'd love to. Yeah, thank mm -hmm. you. You may, at such times, have been frustrated by an inability to share these thoughts or to deliver them with the authority of the truth, simply because you have known that they are true and because you realize as soon as the truth came into your mind, how seldom in the past you have been sure of anything. Mm -hmm. You may have been amazed at this new authority and you may have desired more than anything to have others realize that you really know something that this wasn't your usual opinion or idea you were offering up for discussion, but something you knew the truth about. Mm -hmm. Many of you may as well have experienced the fading of your certainty about this truth over time. It may have been your inability to convey this truth, another's reaction to this truth, 
or simply doubt that you arose within that arose or within your or thinking, simple doubt or simple doubt that arose within your thinking but regardless of this fading of your certainty you still carry within you the moment of realization the moment in which the truth was known to you without doubt known to you without uncertainty and you may begin to realize that what has been said throughout this course that all doubt is doubt about yourself mm -hmm. is true if another challenges you or if your own thinking challenges you. Doubt is quick to arise simply because you do not expect yourself to be certain of anything. And certainly, do not expect yourself to be certain about the right or true course of action required in a situation or of something that has not yet occurred, but that you are given the certainty to know will occur. But once you have felt the certainty, you will never be so sure again that you cannot know the truth. Adding the phrase beyond a shadow of a doubt will be something you no longer need to add to your knowing of the truth because you will realize its redundancy. To know is to know. To know is to be certain. This may seem crazy or impossible. And in your realization that it seems crazy or impossible to you, may become more aware than ever before. Mm. That what I have said about your way of thinking has, thinking being insane is true. You think it's perfectly sane to go through life without knowing anything beyond a shadow of a doubt, without knowing anything with certainty, when the reverse is what is actually true. Mm -hmm. It's sane to know the truth. It's insane to not know the truth. Some of you will have credited your personal or individual self with the figuring out, uh, yes, of this truth. Others of you will have recognized the voice of authority with which this truth came to you as something other than your usual thoughts, other than your usual self. Either way, however, you know that yourself was involved somehow in this coming to know the truth, even if this coming to know the truth wasn't quite of the you of the personal self. Mm -hmm. The thoughts that come to you from unity can thus be seen as both your own thoughts and the thoughts that arise from union. Union is not other than you, as I am not other 
than you. Wow. <laughs> Boom. <laughs> Unity includes you. Just as all of everything, the whole of wholeness, the one of oneness includes you. We are in unity, one body. We are in Christ consciousness, one Christ. We are in wholeheartedness, one heart, one mind. Mm. Beautiful. Thank you, Leah. Beautiful guy. Mm. Done it again. Hmm. I love that union is not other than you as I am not other than you. Mm -hmm. That's a mouthful right there. All right, you beautiful people. Shall we bring this to a close? Mm -hmm. Yes, I could not take any more anyway. <laughs> well, me neither. I think yeah. I, I think I couldn't take it for a while now, but you know, let myself be saturated. <laughs> oh. Beautiful, huh? Mm -hmm. It's really amazing how it works, how it just comes, you know, it just comes on its own, mm -hmm. really does. Suddenly, there it is. Mm. Beautiful. Mm. Love to see you guys. Mm. Thanks for yeah. coming. Thank Thanks, for staying. Yeah. Thanks for staying on the ship. <laughs> <laughs> yes. <laughs> no dessert is here. <laughs> the, last, the last few remaining standing. <laughs> Yeah, beautiful. Well, have a lovely weekend, and uh, we'll be seeing you all very soon. Thanks, everyone. Bye. 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 Bye.